What's up guys, this is Tom Burkhardt from Car Refs Daily, going out for a uh, drive review in the 2016 Land Rover LR4 Discovery. This is a really, really cool truck. Um, you know, I've said and, and thought some pretty disparaging things about the LR4 over the last few years, but, uh, but getting in the driver's seat is really, really um, illuminating because this truck, since it's 2005 uh, powertrain redesign, is awesome it's so much fun to drive and it just feels absolutely um outstanding behind the wheel and uh with phenomenal power really good cabin comfort and amenities including technology um and then uh the um the third the third leg of that stool is uh, a really cool style for 2016 you've got a black pack option for the lr4 uh, that does take its base price of, of about 50k up to uh, into the 65s with the HSC Lux package, tow package, and heavy duty package as equipped on this particular LR4. But to be honest, it really feels worth it and is and is a very very fun and special truck. So we'll do a, do a quick launch, not a launch really, from 20 miles an hour. Uh, this this 340 horsepower uh, supercharged V6 with 332 foot pounds of torque through an all new eight speed ZF automatic transmission is gotta be one of the best powertrains in the world. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely phenomenal and it makes even the LR4 feel very, very um, responsive, fast, and, and, and dare I say it, like a little playful and fun. So those are all very rare traits, um, very rare traits uh, versus, uh, versus any discovery in memory and really get to take the, uh, the LR4 closer to closer to its Range Rover Sport and Range Rover proper uh, big brothers. So really impressive stuff overall. But for this drive review, let's try to focus on, we'll, try, we'll focus on performance um, and, and, uh, and speed, a little bit of its fun to drive nature. And then we'll, we'll touch on uh, pricing and equipment levels. And um, from there, we will, we will discuss uh, um, the competitive set and how the LR4 fits into the future Land Rover market strategy. So we're in a, just a little modest, modest southern traffic here. But um, diving into the, the handling and the drive appeal of the LR4, this is the place where we're most surprised. I mean, you would expect a car to be luxurious and um, really comfortable, but I wasn't expecting it to feel so quick and, and so playful and entertaining. So how did they do that? I mean, as you may or may not know, the, the Discovery uh, Discovery th Series 3, I guess, uh, or LR4 as we call it in the US, is a massively strong chassis and platform. Um, this vehicle employs both a, a uh, solid frame, like a classic pickup truck, where you have um, two enormous box frame rails running the length of the vehicle. And in addition to that, it also has a monocoque. So that's like a unibody, uh, a unibody type design, wherein um, each of the, the panels and, and all of the bodywork, you know, all these pillars and everything form the actual inherent structure of the truck. And usually vehicles choose one or the other because uh, having both is, is deemed, you know, to, it, it makes the vehicle too strong and, and, would, and would too strong and too, too just, um, just over equipped for for its intended purpose um, which for seven seat crossovers obviously most of the time is going to be focused on uh, on on family experiences transporting a lot of people and just overall utilitarian stuff so for land rover to make the lr4 with this uh, exceptionally strong and and the flip side of that is is fairly heavy chassis to be so playful and responsive and feel so urgent is a massive achievement and it speaks to um, excellence in chassis tuning as well as this fantastic new powertrain so this three liter supercharged v6 with the eight speed zf automatic is the standard powertrain um, from 50k for the land rover lr4 in the usa in 2016 but you also have uh, a new three liter turbo diesel option with uh with all the latest uh, exhaust treatments and, and all that stuff that really really ups the mileage um about about 10 mpg for both stats um both stats those being uh um excuse me i just got a little distracted the, those stats being the uh, the fuel economy of 1519 as an average for the LR4 with this supercharged V6. And those go up to, you know, don't quote me, but I think like 22, 25 or something with the diesel. Which is really, really cool to have as an option and is very new to the United States. 
but the vast majority of people will pick the uh, the gasoline V6 just because it is so responsive and so easy um, and is the standard engine. So I love it. I'm really, really impressed. And in addition to having like really dramatic and, and pretty like striking levels of urge, we're in the sport mode of the, uh, the drive programming right now. We'll pop it in the first. It feels really, really quick. The official sprint time is about um, is about 7.3 seconds to 60 miles an hour for the 2016 LR4 Black Pack HSE Lux as equipped right here. However, uh, it really uh, perhaps it's being up so high or just having this really commanding driving position with the the windshield right here. I mean, you have an incredible visibility and a good sense of vehicle height. Um, so that of course it enhances any kind of senses of the dynamics of the car. And that definitely plays true in the acceleration where it feels strong. I mean, the LR4 feels just as quick as the Infiniti QX80 Limited um, or, uh, or, or Escalades um, in the real like hardcore truck class that I feel that the, the LR4 competes in. Despite, you know, it's, it's, it's sizing sort of like aligning with, uh, with maybe a five seat BMW X5 um, or the GLS uh, Mercedes-Benz, the new GL. It really, this is really a hardcore truck. I mean, this is a hardcore truck for people who are going to the cabin, towing boats. I mean, really want to be able to do anything, anywhere, anytime. Um, and, and in that regard, it's really in a different, a different league versus um, the Range Rover Sport, which also offers seven seats or for its latest generation, as well as, you know, many of those uh, sort of like light duty, uh, Light, light crossovers, of course, anything on like the Highlander type of, of bucket, um, as well as any of its, of, of really the luxury offerings. I mean, sort of like the, the G-Class and the Galenda wagon, you know, G500 maybe for, from like 85 to 100K would be the base price for that. It's very difficult to think of how much like unstoppable, expedition ready utility you would have um, in, in, in a luxury SUV. I mean, this thing is intense. So I'm really loving the sport drive mode in particular. Um, it does, we do have shift paddles here, so we're able to control the, uh, the eight-speed ZF automatic um, very, very precisely. And it's, very, it's extremely obedient. So it's holding those gears, we can pop it up to eighth. And from, um, from there, we have a great level of control and also just responsiveness to um, any kind of like foot down throttle. It's, the transmission is super responsive uh, in, in its regular drive mode, but in S, it is particularly eager to, to hop on it. I mean, this thing really, really hauls for such a heavy and large machine. So the, we also have um, electronic, electronic brake assist and corner brake control and uh, electronic brake force distribution, as well as a uh, uh, four channel ABS with all wheel drive, or excuse me, with, with permanent four wheel drive integrated into the design of all LR4s. Um, from there, we also, on this heavy duty package, we have an active locking rear differential in addition to the locking center diff, and we have a uh, range control. So we have low range and high range for the actual, um, the actual four wheel drive system. So if you were to pop it into four low, um, then, you, then you can really employ the max um, the benefits from the adjustable ride height, which has like a really, really jacked up and lifted off-road setting, as well as um, sunken access settings. Um, and then you have like mud, snow, gravel, sand, and, and a few other um, Land Rover drive controls for the off-road experience. In addition to that, you've got like hill, des hill descent control, um, a tow package on this truck with, with electronic link-ups and back, and um, and uh, and an integrated tow bar that's that is there and ready to go at all times, but it's like shrouded behind a really nice body colored bumper. I mean, this is a massively massively useful SUV in the uh, in the classic sense. I mean, this is like this is Land Cruiser stuff. This is this is what Forerunner people wish they could drive because in addition to doing everything that, that a Land Cruiser or a Forerunner will do, it also is like supremely quiet and luxurious and comfortable on the roads um, for when you're not in like, you know, your extreme action man role. So that's a really nice flip side that very few SUVs can achieve and, and really makes you realize that the LR4 is, is sort of like the do it, is a do it all Land Rover vehicle. You know, despite uh, Land Rover's like positioning of the of the trucks um, as sort of its more utilitarian line versus the Range Rover um, a trio at this point with the Evoque, Range Rover Sport, and proper Range Rover, 
you really this is not a, like a really a utilitarian truck in that sense I mean this thing is like